And I want to go now to Ryan Goodman, our legal analyst, and Alyssa Farrah Griffin, former Trump White House communications director, to begin our coverage. So, Ryan, let's just start. There's a lot here. Let's start with Georgia. That was a loss for Trump in terms of what he wanted, um, you know, rejecting the free speech claim that he was making uh, in that particular case. So, but, you know, you hear what Paul is saying, that, yes, Funny Willis says, okay, I want this to start in August, but that that's very optimistic given the broader context here of they tried to get rid of her, and now she's got to, you know, kind of get the wheels back on the bus. Is this case still on trial to start before the election? It very well might start before the election. I don't think the case is at all going to end before the election. The American public will not have a verdict, uh, even according to Fanny Willis's most optimistic uh, preview of her own schedule. Uh, that said, uh, I do think the case might actually start in early August. So we aren't that's not dislodged at this point. And there's some inklings from the judge that that might be the case. The fact that he invited a gag order <laughs> against the prosecutor, usually that's done when you're close to selecting a jury. That's one tea leaf. I wouldn't say it's tea leaves. Yeah. But it might indicate that he's on track to approve it at some point. But right now he's remained mum. Um, we don't know where he'll land. Well, of course, in the closer because the election, ironically, then, if you've publicized, uh, t uh, televised, you only hear one side, um, it gets complicated. Um, you know, Alyssa, it, it, Ryan just brought up the gag order uh, I I issue. So Sarah Murray's reporting the Trump allies are pushing for a gag order against Fonnie Willis in the Georgia case. Now, um, you know, that's, that's quite choice, right, given the uh, gag order situation out there. He's got multiple gag orders that he's been dealing with, and he slams them all the time, sort of upping the ante on the whole concept of gag order. I mean, just listen to these. A judge put on a gag order. I'll be the only politician in history that runs with a gag order where I'm not allowed to criticize people. Can you imagine this? Do you believe this? You saw yesterday where they take away my right to speak. A judge uh, gave a gag order today. Did you hear that on speech? Which I believe is totally unconstitutional. And then he keeps up in the ante in terms of the things that he says. I guess the question on this is, is he going to push these orders to the limit, try to force one of these judges to... Go ahead. Yeah, this, See if you're too scared to put me in jail. This is, this is rank hypocrisy on full display. Um, but what Donald Trump has proved a master of um, in these numerous trials is that he is going to use the legal system and take it as far as he can. And he's got the resources to do it. The average citizen wouldn't be able to delay the way that he has. But because he has the resources, he can do it. He's yeah. pushed the limit on what he's saying. And listen, Fonnie Willis has hardly covered herself in glory in this, but I would have a hard time arguing that anything she has said is anything near the attacks that she's faced by him and his supporters. Yeah, I mean, it, it was just an important point to make, Ryan. Um, can I ask you about the Judge Cannon ruling today? Um, you know, we made the point, right, that the headline seemed seemed uh, that it was a loss for Trump, but when you look underneath it, actually, there was a pretty significant victory. Um, and, and you say it, it's not only a fig leaf of a ruling. It could help him even more than it seems. Can you explain? Absolutely. So his claim is that the classified documents are personal. He could somehow magically make these most highly classified documents his own. It's, does, it's not what the law says. That's just ludicrous. Mm -hmm. So instead of the judge saying, okay, of course that's ludicrous, she just said, I'm not deciding that pre-trial. I might let that happen during the trial. And maybe that's what I'll decide in the midst of the trial. And I'll actually say, oh, those are your personal documents. I uh, issue a, a judgment for acquittal. And that's called Rule 29. She could do it in the middle of the trial. And then it's too late. That is not appealable. So she's actually given him a kind of a loss here, but not really. I think this is not what Jack Smith wanted to hear. If she had ruled now that these could be his personal documents, then Jack Smith can appeal that and have the well, 11th Circuit reverse Well, go up the 11th her. Circuit, and, and they could just they could basically remove her from the case, right? 100%. And I think they might very well want to do that because she's not overseeing the case in the way in which they, I think, with themselves would want to see a judge do this. So, Alyssa, uh, Trump goes to social media today defending Cannon. Uh, very clear how he saw that ruling today. I mean, there's no question about that. Um, he called her highly respected. Now, I just I just have to contrast that with how he talks about judges uh, in his other cases and many other judges. And just so everyone knows, highly respected for her. Here's everybody else. This judge is a lunatic. He's a nasty judge. I have a Trump-hating judge. Her whole life is not liking me. Uh, that her is not Eileen Cannon. Eileen Cannon, again, <laughs> highly respected. 
What do you make of his defense of Cannon, Alyssa? Well, there's two things he's trying to do here. He's trying to sway the court of public opinion. He wants to prejudice the public or his supporters against judges he doesn't like, and he wants to make them favorable to the ones that he does like. But he also, it's a nod to the judge. I mean, it's very similar to one of his attorneys referred to Brett Kavanaugh when he was going to be ruling on immunity, saying, you know, Trump appointed him, so we think he'll be with us. This is something that they do and kind of put out there publicly in hopes of swaying the judges in their favor. Now, of course, judges should be unbiased. That shouldn't affect them. But that's what he's thinking in saying this. I mean, and, and, and will there be repercussions for it? Well, I'm not really. I mean, he can get away with that. And it's very yeah. funny because he always accuses others or often accuses others of what he's doing. He's playing the ref. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, yeah. I, I did that, the irony of playing the ref. I'm glad you yeah. brought that up and make sure we could bring that one home. All right, thanks so much to both of you. you. Great to see you. And former Trump White House lawyer Ty Cobb joins me now. So, Ty, last night we were on together. You were talking about uh, Judge Eileen Cannon. Uh, you had said that, quote, evidence of her bias is pretty palpable. You said she was grossly incompetent. Then today you got to read the ruling. How do you feel after you saw it? So I think she had an opportunity today um, <clears throat> to listen, you know, to review the criticism she received yesterday, not just from me, but from many other commentators. Um, and I, I think it triggered a fight or flight moment for her. And instead of fighting or leave flying, <laughs> She flailed. Uh, this, keep in mind that this ruling is on a motion that has probably a cumulative total of 50 plus pages of legal briefs, uh, with detailed citations to the case law, uh, Jack Smith making it plain that the Presidential Records Act has nothing to do with the case, um, and that uh, not only should the, Trump lose the motion to dismiss, the Presidential Records Act considerations uh, should be completely uh, withdrawn from the case. Um, instead, she issues, instead of citing a single one of those cases uh, where the authority is very compelling, she, she issues a two and a half page ruling that doesn't include a single citation. Uh, and then she has the hubris to suggest that Jack Smith demanded uh, these jury instructions. She's the one who demanded the jury instructions. That's what provoked Smith's response. He didn't demand anything. He just he asked, uh, as he was required to do, that she rule on this issue prior to trial. He's entitled to a ruling on this issue prior to trial. Um, this this ruling actually does give him a basis to mandamus her if if he uh, so chooses. And I think that on at least on this issue um, alone, putting aside whether she would be removed from the case. But on this issue alone, as to whether the Presidential Records Act has any relevance to the trial, you know, he, he would win in the 11th Circuit. And, and, and you know, you, you had made the point that if, if her ruling here today stands, it could set the line up for, for acquittal, as Ryan was laying out, uh, in the actual trial. And that, that, uh, that's which exactly Jack Smith right. And, that, and that's why he has... I'm sorry, go ahead. Oh, I was saying, and Jack Smith, at that point, as Ryan was pointing out, could do nothing about it. So is there any way right. for him so to get has... her off the case at this point prior to that? So he can ask. Uh, I'm not sure that he will ask on this initial appeal. He'll have multiple opportunities because she will not be able to make it through the SEPA process uh, unsullied. Uh, he'll have multiple opportunities, I believe. But you keep in mind that every time you go up there um, and back, it, it serves Trump's interest in terms of delay. She can kick the can, can down the road with the best of them. If she took two outfits into a changing room at a clothing store, it might be days before you saw her. <laughs> As an analogy that we all can understand. Um, <laughs> no citations needed. Ty, thank you.